how's doing guys welcome back to the competitive programming tactics series uh, today we will uh, solve one more uh, technique called uh, sliding window this technique will be helpful to reduce your uh, time and space complexity uh, in this technique uh, we will uh, first understand uh, what this technique is all about and then we will try to see why one should be knowing this technique how it will be helpful to reduce the space and time complexity all right and then we will based on the based on the sliding window approaches different weight uh, shrinks and expands we have different methods or different ways to solve those uh, problems so there are total uh, four variations to the sliding window approach all right and at the last we will try to understand uh, we'll take one problem and we'll try to solve it with a normal uh, brute force approach and we will uh, try to solve same problem with the sliding window approach and then we'll compare the time and space complexity for that problem and at the end we will uh, list down some of the problems which can be solved using this uh, sliding window approach before we proceed if you are new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel as we solves a lot of competitive problems have and having a uh, different uh, uh, techniques and approaches to solve the competitive problems all right now let's get started so let's first understand what is a sliding window approach all right now what it says is a window is formed over a part some part of your data and this window can slide over a data to capture different portions of it now what it says is you have given some linear data structure uh, like let's say array list link list or a string and then you you form a array or you form a window on top of that uh, data structure and you you take some decision or you take some uh, uh, data out of that window and then you your window will slide based on your conditions given in the problem now let's understand this with a little uh, with one more example so what it says is given an array as input extract the pair of continuous integers that have a highest sum of all the pairs and return that pair as an array all right now what it says is given you have one given array and you have to find out a two pair now when it says a pair so we want to find out a two continuous number where the sum is higher all right so first we will start with the first two number where we are getting a sum is equal to four and then we will move one more number to the right hand side then we are getting a sum is equal to 2 and then again we will move same it goes till end so if you see here the window is getting formed as here we are only interested to the pair so our size of the window is going to be 2 only all right and each time our window is sliding uh, one position to the right hand side and we are taking a new decision or we are taking a new uh, results out of that window and at the end we will give the result all right so this is nothing but your how the window or how you are portion of the window is getting slight now why one should be knowing this approach so uh, it used to because of the window and it slides and the you takes a decision on a small subset of your uh, data so sometimes it uh, gets problem solved uh, of your exponential or a quadratic uh, time complexity within the linear time complexity you can solve it within the off and time complexity so that's where we are getting a uh, benefit uh, with this problem approach all right now let's understand different uh, types of your sliding windows based on how their start and end uh, uh, indexes are moving and then we will see the different example also and we'll try to understand that based on your window will have your start index from where it is window is starting and you have your always your end index where window ends based on this two start and end indexes or pointers we will have a different uh, variations to how your window grows or how your window slides all right so this variations we have total four variations now let's understand those so first is a fast and slow so what it says there will be always your one of the pointer is growing fast and the other pointer is growing slow so what it says is you have a two pointers the fast pointer that grows your window under certain conditions and it will also have a slow pointer that shrinks the window once you find a valid window with the fast pointer you want to start sliding the slow pointer up until you no longer have a valid window so what it says is your one pointer is growing fast and other will grow under certain conditions now let's understand with the example what it says is 
so what it says is given up in the problem minimum window substring so what problem says is you have a given one source string and you have a given one target string our task is to find out a minimum window where we can have all the characters of your target string present in the source string so you need to find out that minimum window from the source string so in this given example b a n c is where we have all the characters present a b c and uh, window size is also 4 so in this approach you will always start from your start and end both the pointers from the window pointers from the beginning and your start you will always keep moving until you will find out a window where all the character are present in that source once you will get it you will uh, try to take uh, what you will, whatever the length of that window and then you will uh, slowly move your end pointer because we also want to ultimately we want to get the minimum wind minimum length of the window so you will exclude the unnecessary character from the end and you will see if it is still exist or not and that way your one pointer will move faster one will move slowly so this is one approach second is fast catch up so what this approach says is it's almost the same as what your first approach there is a slight difference is when you get some result your end pointer will always jumps to the start pointer and you will start again checking a new window all right so when you have some conditions fulfilled you will start your you move uh, this pointer to the start so what it says is instead of slowly in the previous approach you will move directly e to here and then you will you again start a new problem so now let's understand the example so what it says is max consecutive sum so in the given uh, array you want to find out maximum consecutive sum from the sub array so you will always start from here both the pointers one pointer will keep growing as it says a fast when your end will move to the uh, uh, start suppose you have a somewhere uh, that adds up that number to the current sum will give a negative number so in that case instead of having a negative sum we will take a sum is equal to zero and instead we, we will consider that there is no sub array which gives a uh, maximum sum so at that time from there onwards you will you move your end also to the start and your start again start growing from there onwards so that is where this fast catch up uh, approach will helpful the next is a fast trailing so what it says is in this approach mostly your start and end pointer both moves uh, at the same time so once your fast pointer moves at the same time also your slow pointer also moves all right so most probably in this case your window size will remain same okay now let's understand with the example so what example says is you have a house robber problem okay so what it says is given a array of uh, integer which uh, gives a which says like uh, amount of gold present in uh, different homes now your job is to uh, rob maximum uh, gold from that but only closes you cannot rob uh, two consecutive homes or house all right so in this case your uh your you always you always your start and end uh, uh, in, uh, in index is always keeps checking and moving based on the whatever the whether you have uh, robbed this house or not all right and the next is front back so this is a similar uh, approach which we discussed in a previous tactic where two pointer approach is so in this uh, approach mostly your window starting from your window will be always having a full length of what uh, data or array is given to you and then gradually you will start shrinking that uh, window based on the results you are getting so if you see the example so trapping rain water is a standard problem for that so you will start from so what it says is given input array is a different height of hills you your job is to find out what is the maximum uh, water we can uh, store in that hills all right so you will start from one from the end and one from the beginning and then you move and then you be, you move your uh, pointers towards each other based on the certain results and you will also capture the whatever the uh, water we are we are able to capture in between all right so these are the four uh, different ways or variations to your uh, sliding window 
all right now let's understand this sliding window with taking one example all right and we will also discuss one normal approach and uh, we will compare it with a sliding window so what problem says is given an error of integers size n our aim is to calculate maximum sum of k consecutive elements in the array all right so what it says is you have a given one integer array and find out a maximum sum and that sum you need to take from the k consecutive elements okay now let's take example so here given uh, is the array is your input array n and then you have given uh, what how many consecutive uh, elements you can pick it up k is equal to 4 so here the output is 46 so it gives the 7 6 10 and 23 these are the four elements if you pick it up that gives you the maximum output now let's understand this with the normal approach first and then we will try to understand with the sliding all right so this is what the input error let's say we are taking so if you take a brute force so what you will do is you will always start uh, your one loop from uh, as an outer loop you will always check for the different numbers and you will take a other loop which will run till every for each element every time it will run for k is equal to 3 let's say or k is equal to 4 so it will run till that point and for each element we will calculate what is the sum we can do so you will first run for this and then from here to here and from here to here so that way you will get in during this iteration if you get a maximum out of it you will store it and then you can uh, return a result of it okay so you have one loop which is running from 4i and it goes till length okay and your second loop runs from i plus 1 let's say and that will always goes from lit less than k that many elements we would like to check and then you will have a result so what is the time complexity here is of your one is you will always go till n for each element you are doing it and the second is you, for each element you are also checking your k number of elements so final your time complexity is going to be of n into k in a, some worst case your k is given as let's say n so it is going to be of n square all right now let's solve it with the sliding window approach so here the k is given is equal to 3 that means uh, we are interested into three consecutive numbers all right so let's say first we took this three number and we take a sum of that so it will be let's say 1 plus 7 plus 6 so that is going to be 14 let's say initial result we have declared as minimum okay every time we will compare and we will store if it is higher then we will store it so 14 is higher as compared to your minimum so we have store it now let's say once we know the result for this window the next next item or next element we would like to see is this one okay when you move to this node okay so your previous window was this okay now the next window is this much all right now when you move your one pointer to the right hand side you know which number is getting out from your window and which number is coming into your window all right so you know the previous window result okay so if you do this way instead of calculating again for the sum for this number if you do this way so you have previous sum plus array of new element minus array of your new element minus Okay. that means we are removing this element we are adding this element to the previous sum so that gives me this number so with this equation your 14 plus 10 minus 1 will give me a new result all right so that is going to be 23 so is it greater than your previous result yes we will re we will update our result 23 okay now once you result uh, you will get the result you will again move your window to the next next point okay so now the previous sum is 23 which number is coming in so that is a 23 itself okay 
so we will add 23 and then uh, which number is going out so that is a 7 so let's remove the 7 so this will give you 39 whether it is higher yes it is higher so result is going to be 39 now once you get that result slide your window to this number now this is 6 is going to be out and you have a new element so that is going to be 1 or 3 is going to be in so we will take 39 plus 3 and you will take out minus so this will give you result as 46 this is higher as compared to that so we will update our result okay and same goes for the other elements all right so if you see the time complexity here we are not taking extra time to calculate for each element for the k times uh, with respect to the previous boot force approach we apply so you will always go one by one you are you are taking a decision you are taking a one element uh, to the window and you are removing other element from the window all right so that's how we can reduce your extra k times which was applying each and every time when you were iterating for the one node all right so here your time complexity is going to be linear you will always iterate for once and then you will get your result now let's go back and uh, see the code for this all right here we have given an array of uh, integer numbers and uh, k is given to uh, to get the consecutive elements that many number of consecutive elements all right so first we have defined our result is equal to zero or you can define it as a minimum okay and then first we are calculating a size uh, first window sum because initially if we are starting uh, sliding the window we may not know what is the result for the first window so first we will take a k elements and we will calculate a result for that window all right now once you have a result for first window we will apply the previous discussed approach it's from next k onwards till your end of the array you will move your one element one by one one element your slide the window so in that case you will take your current sum you will current sum is nothing but your previous sum calculated from previous window all right you will add a incoming new element and you will remove the last index element of your previous window and then you will take a new result with the sum which one is a higher you will store again into the result and return that result from the output of your method okay all right so now let's go back all right so these are the some of the problems i have list down based on the variations we have seen in the sliding window how your window grows or slides so these are the some of the examples we can solve with the sliding window approach all right what i would suggest uh, is to go through these uh, problems try to solve it yourself uh, if you face any difficulties feel free to message in the comment box or you can uh, reach out to me on facebook or as well as on linkedin also uh, that's it in this session hope you like it uh, we have few more techniques to be upcoming in this series stay tuned for that see you in the next video till the time bye bye